everyone and welcome to the Word of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be. Good night, wherever you may be at this moment. It is certainly an honor to be in the presence of the Lord one more time to share His Word. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. So before we begin, let us have a word of prayer, shall we? Father in heaven, bless us and be with us, O God. We ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us into all truth. Till the soil of our hearts, Lord, that your words may take root and grow. Bless us, O God, and give us the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so today we're going to talk about children. I'm going to say some things. Some of you might get upset if you're a parent. Um, you may not like what I have to say, but hello, Mr. Ayola. But um, you need to understand that it is the word of God. It's not me. I'm just going to present the word and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. Amen. All right. So Proverbs 22 verse 6. Uh, make sure you get your Bible, write these down, know them as parents. Because some of these scriptures I'm going to mention, most parents don't even know. These things are in the Bible. Yes, I've said these things to others and they're shocked. Is that really in the Bible? Yes, it is. Let's go. Proverbs 22 verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Many of us know that, right? All right. Uh, Mr. McQueen, good evening. Good evening. Okay, so train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old, he will not what? Depart from it. So what are we supposed to do? Train up the child. Train up the child how? The way God says we are to train them up. Now one may say, but what if the child grow up and turn away from God? Then you did your part. Okay? But God says train up a child in the way he should go. That when he's old, he will not depart. So God said if we train the child up. So here is a promise. Okay? Here is a promise. If you and I train up our children in the way of the Lord as come to the word of God, God says they will not depart from it. It didn't say they will depart and come back. It said they will not depart. Okay? Okay? They will not depart from the word of God. They will all, that will be rooted in them. They will know for themselves. Right? Okay? Proverbs 23 verse 13 and 14. Here is where many parents don't want to do here's where many parents go wrong proverbs 23 13 to 14 says withhold not correction from the child for if thou beatest him with the rod he shall not die thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell now excuse me may i say this i believe the word of god but when it says beat the child with the rod the god is not telling you and i to abuse the child there's a difference between abuse and spanking when a child does something wrong there comes a times you have to spank that child behind okay because the bible says you will deliver his soul from what hell most time why people are so against spanking is because they said when i was growing up my parents used to use this they used to use that some parents use shoes they use all sorts of things to hurt their children that is not a christ-like thing that is wrong and many parents who do that they, they they're the ones who also profess that they're children of god that they're christian no mother no father that is wrong abuse is different from discipline jesus says as many as i love i rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent okay and that is revelation 3 verse 19 so we need to understand that god corrects even you and i amen as many as he loved christ said if he can't chasten you and i then we are not his we are bastards do you understand so correction we are supposed to correct the child in the way he should go many of us allow our children to throw tantrum or you make something for dinner that child will be like oh i don't want that i want this over here i don't want that you make something healthy i'm talking healthy they're gonna tell you they want burger and fries that is not healthy for them right and then you as the parent because they're your little gods. You just go and give them what they want. You're not doing that child any justice. Because when you allow the child to have his or her own way while they're growing up, they're going to go into society and want the same thing. They're going to believe that the world owe them something and that they can do whatever they want. Then they're going to find out that it's not so. Because you have others out there who are waiting for them to come. Not to mention you have the police who is waiting to put his foot in their neck okay so we need to understand that we need to train our children right train them up well with manners correct the child when the child is at home speaking to you as a parent the child must says yes mom no mom yes dad no ma dad 
May I have some of this, please? Can I go in the fridge, please? What you going in the fridge for? The child must ask. You must just let your child run amok in the home. They need to learn that the world is not going to hand over to them an up silver platter. Okay? They need to learn to have manners and they need to learn to ask. And when the child step out of line, you need to bring that child back in line. Okay? Many of our young men and women who end up in jail is because we did not discipline them. They don't, they, so they go out and they just do whatever they want to do. We didn't even put the fear of God in them either. So they just do and hence we have so many of them in prison. So many of them die before their time because of our parentage. Okay? All right. Proverbs 22.15. Proverbs 22.15 says, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. What is bound in the heart of a child? Foolishness. But what does God said will drive it away from him? The rod of correction. Again, abuse is different from discipline. Please do not mix the two. God is not telling any of us to abuse our children. And I know the word rod is mentioned there. So don't get it twisted that you're supposed to hurt your child to say, no, you have wicked parents out there. I'm not talking about those wicked parents who hurt children and pour hot water in them and beat them with big broom sticks and all of these things. No. No, no, no. We're not talking about that. No. They have a nice tushy that they sit on. The butt. Okay? And they have the palm of their hands. We're not supposed to be, um, we're not supposed to be beating them in the head and all of those things and punching your child like you think it's a punching bag. No, no, no. I, mm -mm. God don't agree with it. Neither do I. Okay? That's not, that's, that's, that's abusing a child. But you must correct the child. You cannot let them run around because many of you, your children become your gods. Okay. Either if you have one or you look at God, if you have more than one, they're your gods. Okay. No, you cannot allow that parents. And also you can't show favoritism to one because then the next one will get jealous. Okay. And it will cause chaos in your home. Even if you, even if in your heart you do love one more than the other, don't show it. Just treat your children with love because Christ loved us, don't he? Amen. All right. Proverbs 29, 15 and 17. Proverbs 29, 15 and 17. The rod and reproof give what? Wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to what? Shame. So the Bible says the rod and reproof give what? Wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to what? Shame. How many mothers are out there? And how many mothers will watch this? Your child brings shame to you. Why? Have you ever seen a child in the store? Oh man, I've seen it so many times. I want to swap the child myself. That child is in the store screaming the head off, throwing a tantrum. And there goes the mother, there goes the father. Stop, Johnny, stop, Mary. Oh, this. And, and the child's go, I want this. And they scream and the parents give it to them. You're doing your child a disservice. You're setting that child up for failure. You're setting that child up that when he goes, he or she goes into the world, they're going to suffer because there are those who are waiting for that child to make that mistake. And you see what happened. The police is also waiting for them. Eh? So when we train our, train up our child without no, no manners, no respect, they don't have, they don't respect people or property. Why? Because we as parents, we are the one who did it. And mothers, I'm sorry, I'm going to squeeze you a little harder. Mothers, you allow your child to behave in a way that is not godly. And many of you talk about you're a Christian. You're not a Christian. If you allow your child to behave in such an ungodly manner. If everything your child wants, you give it to him, he or, he or she, you're not training the child right. Because you and I both know, whatever we need in this life, it does not come easy. We have to work for what we have. You need to train your child from home. From the reach a little tender ears or two, three, from even two. Pick your shoes up. Put your shoes where it belongs. Take your clothes off the floor. Put it where it belongs. What belongs in the drawer? Put it in the drawer. What belongs in the laundry basket? Put it in. And you start to train them from the little. When they're little and they have the little sippy cup, or that some of you give them bottle or some have sippy cup, they throw it and it stays there. And you parents go around and you pick it up. Absolutely not. If he or she could throw it, he or she can pick it up. Start training that child to go pick it up. Don't and if they have older siblings, don't don't say to the older siblings, go pick up he, your brother or your sister cup. Absolutely not. It's not they who must pick it up. It's the one who throw it must go and pick it up. Then you graduate and they start to learn tidy your room. You mothers, you make the bed and you show them how to make the bed. Boy or girl, you teach them. Also, when they take their clothes off, if it belongs in the laundry basket, show them laundry basket not on the floor. 
Wherever that clothes belongs, show them where to do it. And as they gradually get older, you know what you teach them? Go take out the bathroom garbage. Start to teach them to wash the sink. Start to teach them to clean the toilet. Start to teach them to wash one or, one or two cups that is in the sink. Don't leave anything dirty in the sink. You drink out of it, you wash it. You teach them these little things. Start to learn, teach them how to use a broom. Things like that, you start to teach them responsibility. Mothers, they learn from home before they can go out in the work field. Their first job is at home. And so, mother, if you don't want your child to bring you shame, he said, the rod and reproof give wisdom. Okay? Spank the child. If you deserve it, spank him. And after you spank the child, don't go, oh, sorry, Johnny, I didn't mean to. Oh, sorry, Mary, absolutely not. You tell them why you're going to spank them. You did X, Y, Z, and I'm going to spank you. And then, before you beat the child, here's a tip for a little tip for you. Pray. Ask the Lord to help you that you will not beat this child in anger and that you are you'll drive out that spirit because you know what when your child disobey did you know that that's a spirit when your child is throwing a tantrum and screaming and go, did you know that that is a spirit because the, that is not a meek and quiet spirit that is another spirit that does not belong to God amen so parents and fathers you need to help the mother to make sure that the rules is enforced in the home. But if you are just as much jellyfish as your wife is, then what do you think is going to happen to the child? The child is going to be a menace to society. And many of us, we have children that are out there wreaking havoc in society. Mm. Continue. Verse 17 of Proverbs 29. Correct thy son and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give the light unto thy soul. Many of you parents, you have no rest. Because every minute you have to, you have to put up even your very home for mortgage to go and bail him out. Why? Your fault. You didn't train him right. And if you, if, if you had trained him right, eh, and he decided that he's going to do what he wants to do, then when he gets himself in trouble and he end up behind bars, do not bail him. Do not go take your money and bail that child, whether he or she. Let them stay there. If they say six months in jail or a year or whatever, or you could give, grant, give them bail. Do not put your house up for that child. Let them stay there. How are they going to learn if every time you run to their rescue? How will they learn? We must let our children learn, okay? But if you keep rescuing them, every time they think they get in trouble, I can call mom and I can call dad, they're going to rescue me. Parents, your child will be ashamed to you. They will embarrass you. They will shame you. But the Bible says, correct thy son, not only son, thy daughter as well. And he shall give you rest. Rest from what? You won't have to be running to and fro, asking your neighbors, your family members to help you with bail money. Or go take out a loan to pay the, ba the, ba um, the bail bond to bail out your son or daughter because of their stupidity. Because of their disrespect. Because of the way how they were raised. So now you're reaping the fruit of your labor. Because if you raise them bad, they're going to act that way. You parents, you will reap the fruit of your labor. Amen. What you sow is what you will reap. Isaiah 11.4 Isaiah 11 4 but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove the equity of the meek of the earth and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked now here we see another rod who's going to do this Jesus Christ hmm so if parents if you don't want to correct your child with the rod that you have they know the belt and their tushy area are in the palm of their hand if you don't want to correct that child from their little because you know what you cannot bend a tree when it get old you will break it that's why it starts from its little. Everything starts from its little. You know, you see some young men and you go in their room or wherever, it's a mess. Because why? The mother and the father is a mess too. So the child turned out to be a mess. Living in mess. Bed has not made all morning. Child get up and gone. Dirty things, hey, high in the sink. They close. They, they themselves smell bad and all of these things. Why? Because we didn't train our children right. And you as a parent, because you may not have raised right, but that doesn't mean you can't change. We can change. Eh. As long as God is sitting on his throne, there's changes to be made. So here there's a rod. So parents, I'm saying to you, if you don't want to correct your child, then God will do it for you. And at this point where God is going to do it with the rod of his mouth, that's his word. It's not going to be a nice one. Your child is going to be lost. How many of you are going to sit there? No, I'm talking about your love. Do you understand what love is? Let me repeat love for you. Revelation chapter three, verse 19. As many as I love. I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. 
Who God love, he will rebuke and chasten. Christ said if he can't chasten you and I, we are a bastard, we're not his. Family, correct your child. Don't be afraid to correct your child. Don't give the child everything they need. Some of you, you you're going to buy the latest phone for that child. Excuse me. Did you know flip phone is still in use? Oh yes, flip phone can still call and text on it. Why do you think the need to buy your child the most expensive phone? The latest Samsung, the latest iPhone. For what reason? For what reason? Give them a flip phone. They can call you. You just need to know you can reach them because you know because of the society we live in. Give them a flip phone. That's okay. If they don't want it, then they don't get no phone at all. Simple. Remember, you are the parent. They are the child. We have a responsibility. Do you think you and I have an excuse to give to God? What will be your excuse? What will be my excuse? There will be no excuse to give to God. Amen? All right. Psalms 89 verse 32. That's Psalms 89 verse 32. Then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. We don't want God to do that to us, right? You do not want God to do that to us. You don't want God to do it to our children. You don't want God to do it to us. Saints, wake up. Stop making your children into your little gods. Amen? Sir, seek the Lord while you may find him. Serve God with all your heart. Do what the Bible says or else you're going to reap what you sow. And can you imagine when the seven last plagues is falling and you look Say you are saved, you are sealed with the seal of God and you look and you look at your children, your son, your daughter and all you see is the, them getting the plague. Now, do you understand that you didn't love them in the first place? If you love your child, you will give them Christ. If you love your child, you will do what God says. That is love. But we're too busy wanting to get as disrespectful as children are. You want to give them birthday parties and give them the latest gadget and stuff and they have no respect, no manners. Why should you do that? They're lazy in the home. When the Bible says, you must not feed a lazy man. They don't want to do anything in the home. It's just you and you. You get, they're laying in bed and you go fix the food while they lay there. They're not helping you. They're not doing anything. But you condone it. Why must you, we parents condone wickedness in our home? Because you train the child that way. And hence, you're reaping what you sow. Alright, Colossians 3.21. Colossians 3.21. Fathers. Provoke and mothers too. Provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. And as parents too, we must not provoke the children. Cause sometimes parents, y'all, y'all can go overboard. The child is doing well. The child is not misbehaving. The child is not doing anything that is, um, uh, that you would consider that, okay, this child is a bad child. You know what you call bad? Okay. But yet still, you're on that child's neck all the time. Because guess what? You don't have the love of Christ in you. So because you don't have the love of Christ in you, that's why you're always on that child. Not seeing the love of Christ, that you should love that child and pray for that child. Encourage that child in the Lord. And then the one who is the devil, that is the one you pampered. That is the one you, 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 you so love. But the one who is trying to do what is right in the sight of God is the one who you cannot stand. Is the one you're always provoking to anger. Don't do it. Last one. Ephesians 6, four. Ephesians 6, four says... Um, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of God. How much you don't provoke them, but bring them up what? In the nurture. We're supposed to bring up our children in Christ. Did you understand that? Parents, I hate to tell you, even though man, the child first came from you, then enter into the woman, into that, what you would call the soil, because you have the seed, you plant it in the soil and it grows, right? Hence, a baby come. So guess what? It is our duty to nurture these children and they don't belong to you they belong to the lord amen they do not belong to the government they belong to the lord amen so god has blessed us with children for those of us who have children and even if the child didn't come from your womb but you happen to be a mother or a father to that child okay you're still a parent i do not believe in step parent because jesus doesn't have any stepchildren do you realize that he never said my stepchildren were all his children. So I don't believe in the step business. And I don't believe in stepbrother and stepsister. I just believe in other brother or sister, mother or father. Because not because a child come from your womb does not make you a mother. Because some women who will give birth, they are like the devil. Okay? Is nurturing. Is that's what makes you a mother. 
nurture our father nurture and especially not just nurture but nurture that child in jesus christ amen you nurture you raise that child up in christ jesus amen so that child can know Christ for him, his, him, his or herself. That's what we need to do. Point our children to Jesus. So that they can get to know Christ and have a personal relationship with him. That's what you want. You want to talk about love? Stop giving the child um, um, GMO, um, GMO love. Eh? Give the child the organic love. The love of Jesus Christ. Stop giving the child the GMO love. The genetically modified organism love. Because that's not love. Give them the true love that comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. The organic love. And you know, you discipline your child. And again, pray before you beat the child. Don't just spank the child. Pray. Commune with God first. Okay. Because as parents, when we're upset, we can beat a child in anger. And we don't want to do that. Because then you can hurt the child. So don't do that. Pray first. And then God be with you in discipline the children. But parents, again, we are to discipline our children. We cannot just have them run amok and it starts from their little. You ever see that little child and you said, don't touch. And they will pretend as if they're not going to touch. And as soon as you walk out the room, just tiptoe back and peek around the corner. You see they're going to touch. Mm. But we need to explain to them why not to touch. Let them know why not to touch. Okay. Don't just say don't touch. Explain it to them. And after you explain it to them and you tell them everything. And if they don't listen, then this is hence. That's when you spank them. I didn't say abuse, okay? Because people don't listen too well. I didn't say abuse, eh? I said spank. I said, you can you have the hand and you have that nice butt that they sit on, okay? Never abuse a child. Don't abuse children. I don't, I don't, that really breaks my heart when people abuse children. Don't do that. Children are a heritage. They're a blessing from God. They're wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, it's, it's a blessing to have children, you know. They, they, they keep you young. They, they make you laugh and they make you cry too, you know. They let you get angry. The different emotions that children can draw out of you as a parent. But, you know, overall, the love that they bring. And it makes us, when, when you, with your children, it makes you understand the relationship between us and God. Did you know that? Can you imagine? It says after Enoch has his son, his relationship with God even got closer. It's supposed to see because when we see them do wrong and then we recognize that we've sinned against our heavenly father and, and the child is asking for mercy. We should look at it that is the same way we ask for mercy from our heavenly father. Huh? So having children give you this um, relationship bond between you and God. Amen. So we're supposed to care for them. We're supposed to love them. Amen. Please. Love the children, but give them the love of Christ. And in the, in the span of loving them, when they deserve discipline, discipline the child. Don't say you're going to discipline and don't discipline the child. And again, I would say, pray first. Okay? Pray with the child first. All right? All right. I pray that you all were blessed. I thank you all for listening. If this was a blessing. If this video was a blessing to you, please share so that others can know um, uh, these, these verses that they're in the Bible and that as parents, we have a civic duty. Please. I'm tired of seeing so many of our children going astray. No respect, no manners. Let us um, go back to the word of God and how to raise these children. Amen. Let us raise them for the Lord. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining me. May you all be blessed wherever you are and, um, and whoever may watch this after. Please let us continue to pray for our children. Amen. We need to pray for our young people, our young men, our young women. Please pray for the head of the home. That is the male who is the head of the home and the wife, his helpmate. Let us pray for each and every one. Amen. But especially again, pray for the children. And pray that the parents will do what is right in the sight of God. Amen. Thank you all again for joining me. May God bless you. May you all have a wonderful evening, night, morning, wherever you may be. All right. Afternoon, wherever. God bless. Maranatha. Until next time. Bye.